Chapter 12, Computing Economic Damages. Now this is a very interesting chapter. Make sure you go back into the chapter and look at the two big cases that are in the chapter. One talks about a business contract that was lost, so damages are computed for that. And then in the second one, a person was injured at work, and so we had to compute her uh, damages for lost revenue or you know, lost wages and benefits and so forth. They are very detailed. A lot of numbers are in that chapter, so make sure you read the chapter and follow those cases very, very closely. Let's look at a few slides. Now, things that you consider when you are trying to measure damages in personal cases is that you, you, know, you have situations where there could be a wrongful death, a wrongful discharge, complete or partial disability, could be a breach of contract or other situations. And so accountants can come in and really help compute these damages in a hopefully a very accurate way. Use of a forensic economist or a forensic accountant. Now, what does an attorney look for in finding expert witness for damage cases? Well, they look and see what is the nature of the damage calculation. Who is best suited to calculate and explain the damage components? Now, historically, forensic economists have provided most of the economic damage testimony you know, in court cases and so forth, but now many more forensic accountants are providing this kind of testimony. So over the last, I would say, uh, 20, 30 years, many, many more accountants have gotten into this area. Now, what is necessary to win an economic damages case? This is a little bit of a review from a previous chapter. Well, you first have to prove is liability. Some wrongful event has occurred, usually a tort, but something has happened and liability was proven. Okay, so either the judge and or jury will, will decide on liability. Then, as a result of this wrongful event, the plaintiff has incurred some measurable damages. So the plaintiff must present and defend the estimated damage amount, and then the defendant will attempt to reduce or eliminate any damages being sought by the plaintiff. What kind of losses can we connect with a wrongful death? Well, it could be lost wages, lost benefits, lost services provided to survivors if they're like dependents or spouse, funeral and administration cost of the estate, and lost income the deceased would have been able to use. Now, in this situation, this could also be for someone who is temporarily or permanently disabled through work. So there are quite a few you know, damage items to consider. Now, as to issues that impact the amount of damages in a personal injury case, we look at various items. For example, how long is the life expectancy of that person? Again, this is an injury case. What level of injuries were sustained? And you'll have the medical personnel evaluating this. And you will use that for your calculations. And as the third point says, what is the impact of those injuries on the employee's remaining work effort and ability to perform services outside of the workplace? Also, you consider what are the characteristics of that person's work life? What is the employee's educational background? What is the employee's gender? What is the employee's expected time left in the workforce? So you have quite a few items, like I said before, quite a few items you need to consider when you're trying to calculate damages for an injury, especially for a permanent injury. You know, temporary injury, there's a certain time period, maybe a year, two years, or whatever, before they're back in the workforce. But a permanent injury, and they cannot work you know, from that point on, quite a few considerations. Using as much statistical data as you can adds realism and conservatism to your damage calculations. Uh, this is a lot better than just, of course, guessing at the numbers. So go find those government statistics, those tables, to try to use for your evaluation. They have things, again, like life expectancy, unemployment possibility, earnings trends, information about injuries, and other kinds of information. So try to go find as many independent sources as you can. To help measure economic damages in a wrongful discharge case, you can look at things such as you know, lost wages, you know, earnings history, earnings estimates, fringe benefits, lost profits if a person was uh, self-employed, 
FICA tax payments that an employer would have paid for that person and health insurance premiums that an employer would have paid. That's part of the uh, fringe benefit area. You will have to use present value calculations in your estimates. Now, frequently what happens is you estimate the wages that employee would have earned out into the future. Um, again, you have to decide on the time period, and that could be if it's a temporary uh, medical issue or injury, you know, use the medical professional's estimates on that. But you have the time period, you'll estimate, you know, what kind of earnings would they have had in those future years. Looking at the first point, you will adjust for wage growth. The second point, what you will do then, you'll have the estimated wages out into the future, and then you'll use present value to bring those numbers back to a present day value, and that would be the amount of your damages you know, for the lost wages. These two processes have a major impact on the net amount of damage in a case. Yes, if you have a timeline quite a bit out into the future, that's going to be the major amount of your damage. And so you need to do the best job you can, estimate what those damages would be, those wages would be out in the future, and then use a correct discount rate, bringing those back to the present. When you are trying to determine the growth rate and discount rates, again, use as much independent data as you can. Now, some states might give you a statutory rate of interest, so you have to use that. In other situations, you, the expert, will have to estimate the discount rate. So again, look at all the sources you can because you're going to have to defend this rate. These rates are very important and you will be questioned on these. Sometimes experts can use statistical data for growth or discount rates. When you look at the fringe benefit area, you know, don't forget about this. This could be another major part of your damage estimate. You're looking for paid health care or insurance, health insurance that the employer had paid for. Life insurance could be part of it. Education programs offered. Payroll taxes. You would estimate the, the portion of the FICA tax the employer would pay. Possible workman's compensation and so forth. But the last point says you cannot double count damage cost. So for example, vacation pay is not a lost benefit because it is already included in the wage amounts. So look for items and make sure you don't double count damages because you don't want your numbers thrown out in court and that'll make you look bad. Another thing to consider that you might not have in the past is what about the value of your household services? So if you're injured or if the person is killed, they can no longer offer services back home. So you need to calculate what those, what those services are worth. In the first point, what amount of services did the person in question provide before the event that caused the loss? You find out what that is. You know, do they provide a lot of services at home? And we're talking about you know, cooking, cleaning, that kinds of things. Now, what amount, the second point, what amount of services can the person in question provide after the event? Of course, if you're injured, again, the medical professionals will help you uh, decide what this percent is. Of course, if the person actually died, then that would be 100%. And then you decide what is the value of the lost services. Another thing in your calculations is, let's say the person lost their job, and now they are suing for, you know, uh, wrongful discharge, lost wages and benefits and so forth. Well, if they're not going to work, there's some cost that they're not incurring because they're not driving or going to work. So you would lower in your damage estimate the cost of commuting. They're not commuting. They don't have these costs that they would otherwise have. Union dues, professional fees, job-related clothing costs. These are items that they are not incurring because they don't have a job anymore. Yes, it's bad they lost their job. You're helping to compute the damages because they lost their job. But these are expenses they are not going to incur because they're not going to work anymore. So these will be deducted from your damage estimates. Well, that's a quick review of the topics in chapter 12. Now, as I said earlier, make sure you look at those two examples in the chapter. The first one is a great example on a lost contract for a business. And the second example is someone who is injured at work. And you can see what the calculations are for those. All right, so that's it for chapter 12. Good luck with your studies.